Hello, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna show you all how to reset the ECU without a scan tool. This is a 2005 Opel Meriva. Same thing goes for the Corsa C and D and Astra with the same engine. This is a 1.4 by 1.6, we'll do the same. Um, I believe that's a G. In the later years, uh, 2006 they had already, and H. So, this is what we do. Let's say you wanna find out if you have any fault codes. What you do is then, you take your key, you press your pedals down. Firmly, brake, gas, accelerator, yeah? You put the key in, one turn, just releases the steering, does nothing, you all know that. Second, your lights come up, and that's it. And now you're gonna see that flashing. That's what you're looking for. That is the engine service. Don't confuse it with the engine check light. That's your check light. That's the engine service light. That usually pops up when the engine car is due for oil change. Or actually, it also comes up when you have issues that are not that major for the engine check to come up, but still require attention. So basically, I'm gonna take my foot off the pedals now. That's gonna stop flashing. Now, how to read the code? You have to do it how I said, two pedals on at the same time, one on the brake, one on the accelerator. You turn till you get your lights pop up, do not crank the engine. If you do, by mistake, repeat the whole procedure. The second turn of the key is what you're looking for. And then you wait a couple seconds. That light is going to start flashing. And you start counting the flashes. Basically, it's Morse code. Ten flashes means zero. Usually, the first code will always be ten. It pauses for two seconds. Then it's going to give you another code. Let's say one. Then it's going to pause again. It's going to give you another flash. You count, let's say, just flashed once. So that's another one. It will pause again, but don't forget, the flashes are pretty fast, and you probably have to read it more times, but it's a four digit, it's what you're looking for. And the third one, let's say, then it paused after the one. It's a very short pause, like two seconds, one, two, that's it. And then it will flash five times. Now this code, which I just said, is a code which I got, and I had to replace the thermal sensor for the engine. And once you replace that part, you could look at this up online, basically default code readings. I'm going to try to hook a link to it so you could read out the code readings, but usually they're gonna start like P0, like that will be the 10, that'll be the zero then. And then, like what I said, 115. So I got P, just P is P. It's not going to show the P, just going to show the digits. 0115. And that would be the coolant temperature sensor. Now, if you were go and replace that, don't then just come back to the car and read it out again. Because it's still going to show that fault. Because that fault has not been deleted from the system. Now, the beauty about it is you don't need a scan tool to delete. How you delete it is, I'll show you. So you got your code, you read it out, you put it on a piece of paper, the numbers, then you make sure your keys are out.
you replace the part for me it was here that was the part I had to replace I know it's a brand new part everything's working fine I start the engine no issues the engine started everything is fine but I still have the code saved how do I delete the code well you come here to the battery and the Astra I think the battery is there no sorry the course of the battery is there also I think it's here the same place maybe a little bit differently uh, positioned it doesn't matter you take off the negative just the negative nothing else you unscrew it you take it out you make sure they don't connect and you leave it off for at least 15 to 20 minutes that's what you do you leave it off for 15 to 20 minutes and then you come inside you turn on your lights and you press the horn a couple times, you leave it off the negative, the cable for at least 15 to 20 minutes. I would say 20 minutes is the best. And then you come back, you connect your negative, make sure it's uh, connected well. If it's a little bit oxidized, you wire brush it off or use a little bit of sandpaper spray some WD-40 on it, you put it back. Make sure you get a good, tight, secure connection. And then you come back, obviously you turn off your lights, and then you do the same procedure again. Then you're gonna take your key, press on your two pedals, put your key in the slot, one, two, and you check. And you wait. And then you're gonna see Service light. Oh, it didn't pop up. Why? Because I did a mistake. I didn't press the accelerate pedal all the way. All the way, brake all the way. And now, key, one, two. Now, we're gonna wait. Disappeared, it's gonna repop. And it's gonna start blinking like there's no tomorrow. And if it, let's say, were to blink like there's no tomorrow, that is amazing. That means you have no other system fault in your car for now. <laughs> but that means the part you have replaced is now zeroed. The code is out of the system. So basically, it knows that because it's not showing no fault. And it's going to repeat to blink until you release your put off the pedals like look there you go it stopped and that's a good thing because now you know your job was successful but obviously you're gonna take your car and go for a drive but since you reset the whole system you don't just hop into your car especially on a winter day and you start driving it there's a procedure to that as well the procedure is you have to start your engine, let it idle for at least five minutes. After five minutes, you have to go normally with the car, try to avoid traffic and just drive. Uh, it's advised at least 50 kilometers. If you can't, drive 50 kilometers all at one go at least try to do half of it in one go what that does is it takes another reading of your engine the ecu is going to diagnose your engine again going to make sure what you changed is stable and there's no other faults if you notice driving that something's not okay obviously your engine could pop up the engine check light or your service light and then you get home or you park your car somewhere depending what popped up and you check this and the beauty about it is you could do shopping let's say you went 50 kilometers you went to a place to do shopping or you just decide to okay i'm going to come back before you do that i advise you to do the same procedure put your foot on the pedals brake and accelerator 
and try to read any codes. Have a piece of paper and pen with you because it's going to be hard to memorize it. And they do flash pretty fast. Maybe in the first go, you're not going to be able to read the code just on the second or third attempt. Doesn't matter. It will repeat itself. If you didn't get it the first time, then it will wait more than two seconds and it's going to repeat itself. But if you got a little bit confused and you don't know when it's going to repeat itself, off with the key, out the key, in the key, pedals, make sure they're on before you turn over to the second position and you read it again. And that's it. You just read it again until you are certain there's a four digit. And like I said, the first, it's going to be like 10. It's going to be zero. It's going to be just one digit. And then you're going to have to look for three more digits. And then you're going to see your code what you have to deal with next if you have to but if you're lucky and everything is well then it'll just flash constantly like there's no tomorrow then you know in the 50 kilometers or let's say 30 i would advise 50 then you know that the engine has set itself to your standards of driving and try not to rev the engine too much just normally drive like you were to drive every day but maybe a little bit more cautiously and like you're breaking in a new engine so basically you know and then see what it reads if it reads you know a code then adjust that code again and do the same procedure change that part or look into it if it is that part maybe you already changed you're going to change something else then doesn't matter just make sure that you get that system reset after you change the part Go for a longer drive, let the engine do its stuff, set up everything, remap itself basically, and then it will source out that part is legit or not. And hopefully it is. And this way you're gonna save tons of money than going to a mechanic who put his bloody tool on, and he's gonna start ripping you off at every attempt he's figuring out or doesn't give up you know what because that's how he makes money or he's that busy that he just forgets no disrespecting but it happens we're human you could do as much yourself that's all saved thank you for watching subscribe to my channel I'm gonna to try to have more car content uh, next year uh, I'm gonna be working more likely on a Astra G 1998 it's good condition car but needs work like anything else and i'm gonna make it a little bit special so if you're interested in that let me know thank you